everyone who's here today. Um, I'm going to kick off by inviting Ingen to say a couple of words about Wise Moves so that you've got an idea as to who everyone is on the call. And then I will do a little bit about Brave Stars and then we'll kind of launch into it all. So, Ingen. Hey, thank you, Lucy. Yes, welcome also on behalf of the Wise Moves Society team on this third day of the summit. We're very excited to be able to present you this summit in collaboration with Brave Starts. Um, the Wise Moves Society is an international online community for the over 50, where we together transition into the next phase of our life while making new friends all over the world, work on our health, find our purpose, find solutions for new challenges we're facing, and even start new businesses. And it's so fantastic to see some of our members, business partners, and experts from all over the world at this summit. People who will be engaged in that what is next after the summit. And I hope that you all will. More about that at the end of today's session. So after two days, when we have discussed the multi-generational workforce and senior entrepreneurship, today it is all about you and, who can, and how you can live your best later life. For me, the good part about longevity is that we have so many moments that we can make new choices. We live in a world where change is the only, well, is one of the few things that we can be sure of. So let's get ready. So looking forward to today's session and the amazing spe speakers we have lined up for you and see you at the end of today's sessions with the wrap up of the summit. Giving the floor back to you, Lucy. Great, thank you, Ingan. Um, for those who don't know me or Brave Starts, just a very, very brief overview. We are a not-for-profit in the UK, and really we're here to help people over the age of 50 who want to carry on working, figure out what it is that they might want to focus on next. Um, we've got, I think the aim with today, so we, we've covered some quite meaty topics already, right? We've already done two extra day, or two other days previous to this. Um, but I think the bee that we had in our bonnet was actually in the media, in the press, anything to do with aging usually gets floor and attention time if it's negative, right? Oh, ageism, look at how much age discrimination there is. Look how many people over 50 are being made redundant. And the narrative and the story is quite a bleak one. And it's quite a, it's frankly just a bit annoying and a bit irritating. Um, so we thought, well, let's let's try and aim for today to be one of those sorts of days where we finish on a bit of a high. Um, mm. There is an awful lot of opportunity and there's a lot of brilliant and wonderful things about getting a bit older and what, advantages that brings to society and I can't think of three better people who can talk to you about that than the three people that we've got lined up for you today. Um, I think before we kick off, so Yvonne is going to be our first speaker, but we do have one poll that I'd like to ask you to share your reflections on and then we'll do a poll at the end and just see if there's been a shift at all. All right, so then let's close that and look and see. So we've got, oh look, I'm thinking our job is nearly done already. I think I think it's probably fair to say we're probably preaching a little bit to the converted crowd here. Um, but interesting to say, so I think it's nice to see that most of us actually already feel quite optimistic about this. Well then, we're just gonna add to that even more. So interesting. Isn't that, I think interesting, if you look at the comments in the chat, there were quite a few people when you were talking about the learning and this, the new currency, um, Interesting how that seems to have come through as probably the biggest one, which I think is good news for Ingen and I, because, you know, we're in that space of helping people unlearn and relearn. And if I had a penny for every time somebody, the penny drops and they go, oh, you mean I can swallow my ego and I don't have to do such a big job? And you go, yes, that's fine. And I go, oh, it's a huge heap of relief. Um, well, amazing, amazing. I'm just going to thank you ever so much, everyone, for completing the poll. Um, I'm going to invite us now. Um, we've got some breakout groups. So we'd like to kind of throw you into those and actually just get you talking about these rules for yourselves in your smaller groups. So um, can I invite you to please go to your breakout group when it comes up. <laughs> and then we're going to have 10 minutes to discuss these in smaller groups. All coming. Yep, I think we're coming back to the main session. Thank you, Elsa B. So it's so nice being able to just sit back and not actually be the person having to organize all of the breakout rooms. It's like every single time I'm panicked that I'm about to close down the entire Zoom or that I'm gonna hit the wrong button. So thank you. 
Fabulous. Look at that. Um, guys, again, just a kind of a quick reminder that, I mean, we'll probably say it at the end, but I think a huge thank you to LCB for all of the flying, the tech and the admin and making all of our lives as facilitators a lot easier out here in the background. Um, so in fact, some very interesting discussions going on in those groups. Should we just hear from the main, um, sorry, from the facilitators, just share a couple of reflections from your group and then we'll move on to Deborah's session. Um, Renee, should we kick off with you? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so the big point in our group was learning and learning in many ways. So learning on your job, learning outside your job when people may say you're on a break, but you're still learning. Learning because you are on your own and you have to be remain relevant. So learning a big thing. And our new rule is keep connected and use network uh, clubbing, I think we called it, but that's, uh, that's, that's, these were the issues that uh, were discussed in our group. Thank you very much, Rene. Um, Mike or Ingen, did you have separate groups? Robert was facilitating our group. Right, Robert. Okay, yeah. Well, in our group also retraining, uh, creativity, uh, multiple Plural uh, job engagement uh, actually boost uh, resilience. Uh, and Mike made a wonderful quote uh, in his gym uh, written on the wall that, you know, make a plan, uh, not only dream about a plan, but actually write it down. So writing down a plan and then obviously uh, make sure that you work your plan for the next few years. Lovely. Bit of accountability. Yeah, uh, impressive. Um, Nicolette, what was your groups? Yeah, I could almost copy Rene uh, uh, about <laughs> the learning and also the networks. Um, but I really like a few things. Like um, My friends had mentioned something about feeling comfortable being uncomfortable. For instance, uh, how you present on Zoom, um, work a bit more with your upper body, things you haven't done before. And she really resonated with learning from the four-year-old. And what is very interesting, uh, Gary works actually with vocational skills people. So it's not just about the knowledge working to reinvent uh, themselves, um, but also, uh, let's say, the plumber who's got his needs. What, what, what can he do if you're not used or have been to university? And also uh, the portfolio careers, multi-careers. Um, and another comment was uh, university. I'm not sure if you and Ingen and Mike know, but university stops actually giving grants when you're 60. <laughs> So basically, if you want to top up uh, on university and do something after your 60s, more complicated. I'm not sure all the details, but that was mentioned as well. Mm, interesting. So, okay. Thank, thank you very much, Nicolette. What about Mary Jane? Four, six. Yeah, um, our conversation was quite uh, different, I think. Um, we The focus was really on the um, uh, need to save more and the discrepancy uh, Deb Gale had... Um, by the way, I had uh, three Debbies in my group and, and four Ds, <laughs> four first name of Ds, so this was great. <laughs> um, uh, she mentioned also about the fact that and only 16% had uh, checked it off the last point on women, uh, the discrepancy in, in what women you know, are, are earning. And uh, so that was, that was pretty much the topic of our conversation. And um, one of the group um, mentioned about uh, the, the adjusting as a senior above 60 to the fact that you're being managed by sometimes younger people. And she reframed it in, in the session, but what we lose in seniority, we can replace with influence. So I found that was a really um, nice way of, of looking at um, uh, that in, in a different light. Um, and, and also, and I think I just want to say, because it did come up and that uh, when we're struggling, that we also don't forget to find that mentor, uh, you know, in, to help us uh, to brainstorm. So that was, that was pretty much our group. Fantastic. Great. Um, have I missed any of the facilitators? I apologize. I'm across a couple Ninka. of screens. Yeah, Ninka. Sorry, Ninka. It's okay. It's okay. Um, we had a, a, a very nice discussion also about the, the resilience and the money part. So uh, where I have your resilience and, uh, and the learning and learning from 
having an open view uh, in different areas is quite in, important to us. Continue to learn and learn from your four-year-old perspectives. It's, it's really um, important to us to keep that capacity and see the difference from there. Mm. Creating an impact, uh, leaving some kind of a legacy to give meaning to whatever you do, rather than just stick in whatever you did so far. Just having this, this fluency of moving on. And uh, what we would love to have is also a new kind of leadership. Mm. Oh, uh, and, and that's something what's uh, um, an opportunity for us. And I think that, that reflects a bit on what the, the previous one shared, just to, um, well, have your influence rather than leading, leading everything. And what uh, was mentioned in our group as well is having a really attention of the gender pension gap because it's huge and it will have a huge impact on whatever you do in your, your next life stage. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Minka. What we brought up. If I'm yeah. forgetting any for anything, I would love to have it in the chat. Um, and then finally, Dominic. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Um, first of all, I was. Uh, what always strikes me in these things is the breadth of experience and knowledge that people bring to these events, uh, and in a way, it's quite humbling. And we start with Bonnie with a, an excellent suggestion. I don't know if this actually happens anywhere, but actually, at not having a retirement age, but opportunities throughout your career where you can take a sabbatical to learn mm -hmm. something new or completely different um, and, and change career if you want to, to do something new. But that then tied in quite nicely with a, a fairly common theme across most people around developing packages and having the plural career and grouping things together uh, at different stages. Um, we too had the thing around the inequality of uh, women's pensions and actually uh, it was it was a combination. It's interesting to understand the the, the statistics that what sits behind those statistics. To what extent is it historic, um, and to what extent is it about choices being made by women currently who are having the cho to choose between their pension and looking after their children, um, because that seems to be uh, seems to be the choice. Um, and then uh, finally, uh, there was. Um, Alan made a good point to the link to the pension point, which was a, um, around, you know, some of some people don't have the luxury luxury of having to choose and they are required to just stay in their career because they don't have that say those savings in place that enable them to have to take the time out to choose these things. Mm -hmm. And then finally, one thing was around that we felt might be missing was again linked to this was around parity and about equality, not just in age, but other elements of diversity and inclusion. And that everyone should, should, we should do our best to find ways of ensuring everyone has an equal opportunity. Yeah, Sorry, wonderful. You may have liked, but, um, brilliant, brilliant, thank you. Um, so I think Yvonne, you can probably see that, you know, your conversation has sparked off an enormous amount of discussion and an enormous amount of thinking from really some quite impressive individuals. Sharon, did you want to say something? We had a group with, with the writer. Where are with we? Yvonne. Look yes, you. it was Come brilliant. It was, this is we your day. Privileged. So Yvonne, do you want to speak about it? It was, um, it was good actually. And there were lots of questions. I think um, people were asking, so what are companies actually doing? And are they, keeping uh, their own people but are they also actively recruiting new older workers and um, I just happen to have some new stats up my sleeve that 23 world companies are uh, but that needs to increase it is on the increase because of the great resignation and great retirement uh, we talked about mentoring programs and succession planning programs and why, why that works um, I've just put a link in the chat about how to fix the gender pension gap because we did some work with the World Economic Forum on that. So we published an article and um, there's a lot of reasons as employment, socioeconomic, individual pension design reasons to fix it. And I'm on a one, well, not just a one woman campaign, but I'm on a fairly big campaign stampede to, to get that awareness out there um so it was very good i'm sure i've missed a few things sharon from that conversation <laughs> <laughs> no 
<laughs> there you go. But I mean, what a way to kick things off. And I and I hope you can see Yvonne just again the amount of digesting, reflecting, and I think hopefully useful conversations that that your thinking has helped sparked off for us all. Um, I think, can I invite everyone to please thank Yvonne for her time? She's not going to be able to stay for the full session, but you've pulled it together and you've customised and you've given up your time for free um, today. And we are very grateful for everything that you've done. You're do and you're doing World Economic Forum and all these things. Fix it. I tell you what, you focus on the gender pay gap. We'll focus on the relearning. <laughs> all right. Thank you. And enjoy the rest of your session. It was great to join you short for, for a short Lovely. while. Thank Lovely you. to have you. Thank you. Right, so I think that segues us rather nicely into the next portion of the day. Um, it's interesting how kind of going around the groups and hearing some of your reflections, how there was, I think Ninka, you were sort of saying something about that balance between earning income and actually wanting to face, you know, wanting to go up a bit of meaning and perhaps some purpose in our lives. Um, and that's really what Deborah's here to talk to us about today. So. Deborah, and if any of you haven't been to a session yet with Purpose Exchange, I can strongly recommend them. Um, really interactive and really interesting. And Deborah is just, oh, you're just, a, just great fun to have in a session anyway. So uh, Deborah, can I invite you please just to introduce yourselves to everyone? And um, your, your piece really is gonna be talking a bit more about a little bit the, the age of no retirement and you know what older people can do to achieve at this stage in their lives. And I think, probably nothing better than to hear it direct from you. So over to you, Deborah. Well, thanks very much, Lucy. Um, to introduce myself, I am a, I'm in my encore career. I um, was a, I had a finance career and then I had um, children. I had five children in five years, which completely ripped me out of the uh, <laughs> workforce. And, and so then I spent, you know, a good 20 years going, what do I do? What do I do? You know, like I've lost everything. And um, blow me down when my three eldest went off to university, I went back to school and retrained in aging and public policy, because I said to myself, what is the biggest market that is facing us in the 21st century? And I thought, it's us, because we are a living longer and everything else. So that is, is really um, kind of how and why um, I became part of the Age of No Retirement, which is the social enterprise that I now work for. And so why the age of no retirement, I guess, is the question. Well, um, it started in 2014, but when it was getting underway, it was just a notion, just a notion. But today that notion is becoming more a statement of fact. We really can't retire. Um, some people can't afford to retire and therefore continuing in productive work is really um, something that looms for people coming just not far down the pike, or it's already their reality. And then the more fortunate ones among us can decide or do decide to jump out of the rat race. And But then all of a sudden you're waking up to what does living longer actually mean? And that's kind of scary. There's lots of us who are older, but not yet old. And you're looking at a third, maybe half of your life yet to live. And so, you know, returning to Yvonne for a second, when she interviewed me for the book that she wrote, um, one of the things we zeroed in on was the fact that, you know, as we reach 50, none of us are thinking about having another 40 years or something. I mean, it's just not even taken on board. And that still holds true. That still is very much the case because you don't have the, you know, coming up to 50, you don't have the perspective when you're on the other side of 50, you're all of a sudden going, what a lot of us said in our breakup, holy cow, now what? So I think that it's really incumbent upon us to reposition aging as synonymous with living. So let's start with the word retire. Why? Why would anybody want to get tired again? I mean, think about it just, you know, from a <laughs> semantic standpoint, you know, and I think we should just get rid of it entirely. Instead of saying, I'm not ready to retire, well, let's go, actually, I'm ready to, to earn. I just don't want to do the same thing that I did before, or I can't do the same thing I did before or I want, I'm ready to learn. Maybe I wanna do, maybe I wanna paint. Maybe like Yvonne, you wanna go and, and teach yoga or, or do Pilates or train to be a brain surgeon. You know, I mean, it doesn't matter what the it is. So back to the age of no retirement, our earliest intention was to basically go, okay, we need to rethink work. We wanna disrupt the retirement space. We wanna work on changing the negative narrative. 
And we also want to blur that whole retirement line because stepping over it is no longer what it once was. It used to be a literally a cliff edge. You were working one day and then the next day you weren't. So we did some research and we asked 2000 people aged 18 to 99 about their lives. And it was everything from big life tensions to the little microaggressions that get us down every day to the quality of your relationships, the whether or not you felt overwhelmed by the pace of technology. Um, did you feel you had enough time, not enough time? And what we found out was so interesting that there was no statistical difference in experience between people, whether you were 25 or 65. So that commonality across all ages had so much, you know, just gave us so much information because it was so in conflict with all the generational stereotypes, or at least what they would have us believe. So then we figured, okay, so behind all this commonality, what, what, what is there, what else is keeping us together? And so we did some more research and found out the most powerful motivational force held by people of all ages, regardless of age, was purpose. And more specifically, purpose when it was aligned with your ability to earn. So then we had two data points. We had, okay, we've got so much in common and now we know that um, people need economic purpose. And so that became the bedrock for what we've started as the common room. And we had two physical locations in London until COVID hit and we had to close those for COVID. And, um, and that then had us pivot into what we are now at the Purpose Exchange, which is an online engagement um, platform, if you will. And we help people find their purpose at every age, at every stage, at all the transitions that life invariably throws at it, uh, throws at us, I should say. And if you think about it, your future begins every single day. So you're going to have a transition quite often throughout your life. So be ready for that. And your purpose changes along the way. But the most important thing about all that is you really have to understand what the it is for you. So what makes you tick? Where's your mojo? Where do you get it from? And then once you know that, what are you going to do with it? What do you intend to do with it? And then how do you activate those intentions? And the fundamental message and the purpose paradigm that we, we push is really the intertwined dependencies between your identity, your intention, and your action. It's really easy to say, yeah, I'm going to do that, but it's harder to activate it. So we're really talking about purpose as being a momentum thing. And Lucy asked me to consider two things. She asked me what something older people can and do achieve at this time in their lives. Well, first of all, I hate that term older people. Sorry, Lucy, because it's so vague. So let's narrow down things. I don't know everybody in the audience, but, you know, are we talking about 45 plus? Hands up. Are we talking 50 plus? 60 plus? But let's agree, all of us doesn't matter. We all have to make the growing numbers, and there are growing numbers of us, of older people, the most empowered, the most skilled, the healthiest, and able to contribute in society, and not unhealthy, disempowered, dependent, right? Everybody on the same page? We all agree? Good. Okay. So right now, everybody is sort of metaphorically removing or lifting their masks because even when COVID continues everywhere, we are getting back to the rhythm of living again. And if you look around, there really is something great going on. And at various points during this great pause we've been in, it's been called a great awakening. It's been called the great resignation. But actually, really early in the pandemic, I heard somebody refer to it as the great humbling. And I really like that. Because the pandemic humbled us. It changed everything. And particularly where work is concerned. And we may have all been operated in our, operating in our own little comfortable work bubbles. But it's become increasingly clear that uncertainty is now the new price that we all are going to pay for, for life, for the rest of our lives. And when people find themselves moving into this new time of life, and we could call it the retirement space, but I won't because I don't use that word anymore. Um, we found that most people, when they're getting ready to move into this unclassified space, it was earlier than we thought. And actually around age 45, people start to hunker down 
They don't raise their hand so willingly to step up to do something. And then as the years start ticking by, they, they start experiencing the transition in a more unsettling way because many of us feel like we still have, we have ambition and we just don't know what to do with it. So the question then is, what track are you on? Are you on an earning track? Are you on a learning track? Are you on a giving track? Are you gonna do all three? So let's start with earning because a lot of people have talked about that in the last, um, in the breakout about how we, you know, women are, are making less, et cetera, et cetera. So earning is still a, a very valid concern. And now more than ever is a time to do the kind of work that pays because we need the money, but also something that really matters to you. Because at the same time, we know that workplace ageism is a real thing. And the pandemic led to the most significant employment fall for, for um, older workers since the 80s. And it now takes people over 50 twice as long to find a job. And that's probably why if you listen to um, Elizabeth Isel in the second session, she was talking about older entrepreneurship. That's why right now 20% of workers between 50 and 69 are self-employed. And partly to blame is the way that tech now drives our lives. It drives all of our lives. And so there's a disconnect between the skills that are needed and the skills many older people have. But that's not a deal killer. If you look at any, any job posting, let's use LinkedIn because a lot of us are on LinkedIn, outside traditional industry roles, most of the jobs posted didn't even exist five years ago, let alone three before the pandemic began. But the digital transformation has accelerated everything since the pandemic began. And all the companies in all the industries who are looking to innovate and gain competitive advantage, there's a need for their employees to have the skills to help them to do that. But that also means that nobody has very much experience or experiential wisdom. So pretty much everyone is making it up at the same time. And nobody thinks about that. You know, they all said that, you know, when the pandemic hit that older people weren't gonna be able to, you know, get turned on to technology or to switch on. We, we did, you know, I mean, everybody did. So we, we stepped up to the bar. And so they can't say that to us anymore. So I, I tend to think that that makes everyone's individual skills, talents, experience, wisdom is necessary. We need all ages, particularly now, because we need the exuberance of youth and the experience of age. And don't discount the rising popularity of remote jobs. I read that um, in February, all of the remote job applications represented 50% of all of the jobs that were posted. But there was only 20% that offered remote. So people want to be able to work from home. And that also changed everything. So that then brings me to learning. So let's talk about learning. If you still need to earn and you're hitting brick walls, well, maybe you're gonna to need to get some new skills. And so I have started to check out all of the things that are available online. And it is incredible. Right now, AI and machine learning are the buzzwords. That's all you read about. But there are practical applications for artificial intelligence and machine learning. I mean, you can do on a, um, on a massive open online course, they call them MOOC, you can do everything from how to get how practical applications for machine learning or strategic business strategy using AI. So, you know, I mean, there's all of a sudden the skills that you have accumulated as a worker have real feasibility within a machine learning or an AI environment. So don't be, don't be afraid of those is my point. So you just have to be able to put yourself in the frame. If you can see yourself in that frame, or even if you just want to prove that they were wrong about us all along. You know, we can, <laughs> there's a lot we can do. And I also think you have to commit to being regularly, regularly scared out of your wits. I almost said something else. <laughs> but you have to be, you have to be able to be scared and willing to be scared. And with practice, you get a little bit, you can adopt some fearlessness. And lastly, I want to talk about giving because giving is always considered, you know, part of the triad of the, the things you're supposed to do, what older people are, are able to do now. And in all the work that we have done, we really concluded that we should be giving, giving some more heft earlier on 
and a whole lot earlier because it's not just about volunteering and it's not just about writing a check for a, donate, for a donation to a charity. It's about aligning your social value in sync with your economic value. And people don't do that. And that's something that we really get into at the Purpose Exchange. So let's talk about what opportunities, this is what Elsa Lucy wanted me to talk about, what opportunities do older people present to organizations and society? Well, if we are really serious about disrupting this retirement narrative and challenging it, we need to get our skates on. And if we really think that the future is gonna be worse for our kids and grandkids, because everybody goes, oh my God, it's not like it was when we were younger. We need to get on board. We need to step up to the plate and do everything we can to stop that. And let's start immediately. In, in just 12 years in the UK, the over 65s will exceed the under 18s. So our work is cut out for us. And this might ring true for some of us in the audience who had um, big jobs. Many of us assume that the more successful we are or were, the less susceptible we become to the sense of professional or social irrelevance that often accompanies this stage of life, this transition point. But the truth is the greater your achievements were or your attachment to your reputation, the more we probably notice our decline and the more painful it might be. So let's just agree, it didn't matter if you were a rock star or just a little cog in a very big wheel. We all wanna make our older years more purposeful, a time of happiness, a time of success, because it's all still possible. And so I don't know about you, but I listen to lots of podcasts and I always get a little nugget of something out of all of them. And it's, it's usually just enough for me to go up for a brisk walk, you know, and get the gray matter agitated a little bit more. But there was one nugget that really hit me and the basic essence was that throughout our lives, all of us get holes blown into our lives, big holes. Some of those might be expected, some might be unexpected, and some are absolutely tragic, but they all come. They're unescapable, inescapable, sorry, and unavoidable. And so what do you do when you got a hole? You have to fill it. So that's where the opportunity lies. And the answer is this, just keep brave, like brave starts, keep being brave and full of life and realize that you can't do it alone. And that's what I think a lot of people get hung up on. You think, oh my God, you know, it's all about me. It's not like purpose. It's just beyond you. It's never about you. It's always just beyond you. And if you think also nothing of beauty, of merit, of success was ever done solely by one person's steam ever. So my invitation to you is think bigger, think broader, because anything you do, anything that you help shape that is going to be impact, impactful is going to be something that is greater than if you did it alone. And that's where the goals for the purpose missions of the purpose exchange come in, because we all are, you know, we're all hepped up about everything from the pandemic to Ukraine, to disinformation, misinformation, poverty, prejudice. And unless we can get all sorts of people turn on to purpose and be change makers intergenerationally, we're not gonna be able to get enough done because we can't do it alone. So this is the whole collective. We have to do something together. And that's where empowerment, purpose, and really love comes into it too, because they coexist in tandem and they get their energy. Their energy source is us. So mm -hmm. it's all about us Nothing. because there really is no more later. Mm -hmm. There is no more later. So I'm going to finish with this. There's a word that fell out of fashion in the 1800s, and I want to bring it back. And it's called vitativeness. Now, that's a mouthful, and it doesn't exactly roll off the tongue. But it's, it means love of life, and it means vitality. And I think that encapsulates everything that um, you guys have been trying to do in the first two days of this uh, seminar, and certainly today, because it encapsulates what all of us want. It's pure, it's simple, it's endlessly applicable, and it's very valuable. So I don't care whether you're earning, learning, giving, or just being, turn up the dial. <sighs> Lovely. Thanks. Thank you, Deborah. That's really, I think, yeah, I, th I think we can all relate. There's so much of what you were saying, or I could see a lot of nodding heads and I could see people resonating with some of the things that you were saying. I think just a really uplifting message for all of us. 
Um, I think you've put us in a very strong position to, I'm going to invite everyone again to go into some breakout rooms. I'd like to, I'd like to invite us to consider some of the things that Deborah's been saying. Um, I think in particular, there's a lot of what you've said about, you know, the value that people, I'm not going to call them older people then, just people <laughs> can, can value we can add as we age, is that slightly better? Um, mm. but I'd like us to reflect on the value that we can add as we are at this stage in our lives, potentially, um, and to kind of consider that in our breakout group. So Elsie, can I invite us or invite everyone to join their next group? Thank you. This meeting is Lucy, being recorded. I, I, I thought we were this is the breakout room. I think we've all come back. Yeah, but I thought we had much longer. Um, yeah, that's what I thought. I've, I've got spoke to two people and we're back. It's a bit, that's the seven minutes, but I thought we were doing it together. I'm Combined. not sure. I was in a different breakout group. No, no, my question was the, this breakout session would be two sessions together. No, we, for the interest of making breakouts a little bit easier, we said we would just condense it down into the one. Sorry, sorry, Nicolette. Um, I don't understand. So it was only seven minutes then? Instead of 25 minutes in our... Um... We've just had 10 minutes, but I think, again, we've got to try and, you know, interest of timing, probably need to move on a bit because we do have, I think, one of the things, though, to say, um, I want to try and capture or make sure that everyone's got a time. I'm going to suggest, because we are running a little bit behind time, okay. um, rather than kind of debrief all of those facilitator groups, perhaps just one line, one thought very briefly from each of the facilitators, just on what some of the main thoughts were coming out of those sessions. Shall I start, Lucy? Go ahead, Nicola. Yeah, I think it's very much walk your talk. Um, we had a, a, a lady had her own coaching business and trying to embrace transition, go on the bike from the Netherlands to Lisbon, do the crazy things, we can still change. Oh, do the crazy things, I like that. Um, how about Ninka, what was your group saying? Oh, I asked the group what to, what to reshare with the group, and we, we could all go on for a long time. But um, I would say now, and otherwise, just put it in the chat for my dear group, um, is really um, start life planning instead of only at school doing yes. whatever you learn, but have skills of life so you, you can fill your holes instead of just being scared of them and do nothing and face the consequences later. Mm -hmm. Life, life skills. Yeah, love it. Thank you. Any age. <laughs> yes, any age. I hear you. Dominic, how about your group? That was actually extremely intense, dare I say it. So, so I'm going to go to obviously not just one word because you know me better than that. But there is something about energy and life and vitality that's required to learn. And, and, and that's almost age independent. You know, it, yeah. it should be age agnostic almost. Mm. And act, learn, act, and do it collectively was another word that came through. I love it. Nice nice, and uh, there's that message in there again about, you know, collectivity and working together and community. Brilliant, right. thank you. Um, Mary Jane. Yeah, I had the great fortune of having also Lucy and Deb, uh, Gail in my uh, in my session. And I think what what really came out of it was for all of us is the inspiration um, to do something. And um, even if we're not sure right now what we want to do or how we're going to do it, but that the, the this session has really inspired um, others to uh, to take action. So thanks everybody that was in my in my group. Lovely, thank you. Robert? Yeah, we had five people and five different opinions, which was very interesting. But the, common, uh, the common thread was probably clarify purpose, know why you want to do the things you want to do, uh, learning, learning from yourself, learning from others, have the exchange between, uh, between the mm -hmm. two. And I guess uh, fun was one of the major remarks made, have fun. I couldn't have said it better myself. Fun. Always high on top of my agenda. Um, Renee. Hey. Um, so we had a few ladies in our breakout group, group that obviously had sort of this portfolio career, like different elements, 
uh, either by chance or by choice or a combination of both of them. And we just said at the end, okay, it's funny because all of us are a little bit older now and the millennials are reinventing the thing or inventing the thing of portfolio career. And we already did it. So that was one of the key things. And the other big takeaway for us was the view of, no, it's not retirement. It's too rigid. We, we need to move away from that. Yeah. That's, that's, I think, basically what we came up with. Lovely. Brilliant. Thank you, Renee. Um, Thomas, were you doing a breakout group? I was covered by Mike. Ah, <laughs> uh, I was in the same group. So. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll take over real quick. So I think the, what we spoke about was um, we picked up on Deb's point about earning, learning, and giving, all three being important. But the, the conversation focused around learning and the, the total cost of learning. So oftentimes there's a cost associated not only with the course, but the fact that going back into a new career um, it also means that you may be going in as less salary and that you have to think about the total cost of learning. But one really interesting point was, and that there are some forward thinking employers out there who don't necessarily always look at classic career, classic qualifications, but prepared to hire people based on experience, character, and um, learning they've got through MOOCs and other things. So there's a bright future, I think, if we look differently at how we gain learning. Lovely. Um, I think we can all agree, um, Deborah. thank you for such an inspirational talk. And I think really spoken from the heart. And I think we all really felt and got a lot out of your session. And so we greatly appreciate your time, certainly your vitality, certainly your bags of energy and your very clear amount of purpose that you put into this. So again, a huge thank you from all of us. Lovely. Thank you, Thomas. And I think nice to give us something concrete. So I think I think you probably all know where we're going with this. Right. So if Thomas's research is saying you need to have been you need to be thinking connectedly about what it is from a concrete perspective you are thinking about doing in the future, um, but also thinking slightly reflectively, what are the things that give you your greatest sense of joy? I'm going to invite you to the final breakout group of the day to short to talk about those two things. So um, Elsa B, if you could open up our final room of the day and I invite everyone to please go to your breakout rooms. Thank you, Thomas. We'll come back and reflect. This meeting is being recorded. Um, Sorry, sorry everyone, I think that feels like a bit of a brutal chunk comes straight back in and <laughs> apologies. We've had to sort of crunch down the breakout room times a little bit to try and accommodate everyone and kind of get back to the main session. Um, we've got a couple, if I could just again, finally ask the main, the facilitators just to share their headlines from each of those rooms. Dominic. You should I share? Oh, Dominic, go ahead. Sorry, I wasn't, okay. So uh, very quickly, what's interesting was we, there was a great deal of consensus is that whilst the younger self might have felt the need for the concrete visualization, the older self is much more values driven and everyone was very clear what their values and benchmarks were, but less definitive about what that physically looked like. And there was a thought that by having a definitive and clear kind of visualization almost could hamper you or be restrictive or constraining in what you might choose to do. Whereas judging a future opportunities by a set of values or hurdles that must be passed, it was actually more liberating. Mm. enabled you to uh, enable you to do it and a lot of everything was around uh being having having a sense of positive change and making a wider contribution to society rather than a me 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 kind of visualization yeah wonderful and i love thomas you won't be surprised that you know a group like this is sort of challenging some of the research ideas so i love it this advice thank you dominic and um, ninka what we discovered is if you know what really matters to you and have that vision and you feel it deeply inside it doesn't matter where you go in 10 years because then you have the flexibility the fluidity just to to be with whatever shows mm. and if you are too rigid you lose this opportunity but as long as you stick to yourself yeah you, know, you I, can handle a lot from within with the intrinsic motivations and drives and vision that how wonderful. I love, yeah, brilliant. Thank you ever so much, Ninka. Renee. 
Yes, yeah, so we discussed a lot about this intrinsic, uh, intrinsically being intrinsically motivated. And it, someone in our group uh, said, this is what gets me up in the morning, which I really loved as sort of very practical expression and manifestation of in being intrinsically motivated. The other thing that we uh, discovered or and discussed is that uh, one, there's a lot about helping others or, or bigger picture, whatever was mentioned already. And it's about having passion for things, that, you know, doing things that you're passionate about, that feels that, that, that feel right. And um, also you're good at it. So it's sort of bringing together your talents and what you love. And that's whether you're younger or older, doesn't matter. That's always good. So, and the last thing was really focus on health, being healthy. That was another thing to you know, to be uh, to be there in 10 years, 20 years now, take care of your health. So it's it was at the same time a little bit all over the place, but these were a couple of the things that we discussed. Brilliant, thank you. Mary, um, sorry, not Mary Jane, Mike. So we had a great conversation that we had about um, the importance of having a plan, but also finding out what gives you joy and also finding out what other people in your, in your circle, friends and family, I think picking up on what Renee said and what gives them joy to see how you can support each other, but how it can almost keep you honest in terms of working through your plan. If you've made it with somebody else, you're more inclined to actually want to see it all the way through. So it certainly encouraged me to have a, a different conversation with my partner at dinner tonight. So <laughs> thank you to our group. See, look at that, a constructive outcome already. Um, Robert. Yeah, our group uh, shared uh, interesting moments of joy and uh, purpose. Uh, obviously, the combination of working while cycling over a period of three months from the Netherlands to Lisbon, which was very interesting, providing joy while work was done. Um, also, coming out of a bad illness situation where coming back to the work, uh, to, to the office successfully, was felt like quite an accomplishment. Um, and then obviously we had a couple of uh, grandparents that, uh, that really enjoy, um, uh, you know, sharing knowledge and experience with the, the younger generation. So that kind of wraps up what we discussed in our group. Marvellous. Um, and Nicolette. Yeah, well, I think we had quite a bit of a different type of discussion. Um, it was not actually per se what you see yourself doing 10 years from now, um, but it's very much about uh, the environment uh, you will be working in. It will be a supportive environment because we're not all the same, so to speak. So it was a bit about inclusive, inclusivity. And um, I think another thing which is good, like what you've learned in life to actually uh, also help others um, to make different changes because you've been in that position. Um, so a bit more from a coaching perspective. Um, and I think we talked quite a little bit about that and um, that were the main things that came out of it. Uh, restricted on time, I guess. <laughs> so, yes, restricted on time, which I think is a, a message for all of us. I think all of us would love to have had more time. And in a way, I think that's a good note to finish on. If you leave people wanting more, then that's probably quite a positive feeling. Um, I mean, I'm just going to wrap up because, again, we've got to pay, pay attention to the time and respectful of the fact that people have got other things to get on with. We've got Easter this week. But I'd like to thank all of our speakers for, I think, what's been a really wonderful session today. You know, Yvonne with some facts and figures and raising thoughts about the optimism and, you know, the, thing, the fact that things really are changing. And then the fact that, Deborah, your really inspirational talk as well. Thomas, you've given us some constructive ideas about what we should be thinking about, which I guess with, is within our control. Um, we do have one final poll. That's me done. Thank you all. And then we're going to hand over to Ingham to close. So I appreciate all of your time and energy effort and effort, everyone. And good to meet you all. So last poll. And then Ingham, if you want to get your slides ready for the close. I think, Elsabi, you probably know when everyone's submitted on the poll. Yeah, we're nearly there. So how are we doing? I think we started off with something like 27 and 37. So look at that. It's gone up even more. So 35 and 42, which is fantastic. 
And that was a bit of a goal. You know, we wanted to finish on a high. So thank you very much to our speakers for doing that. But mm -hmm. mostly thank you to all of you for contributing. Um, Ingun? Oh, I am muted. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> I'm sorry. That would have been a really great wrap up. Really fantastic day again. Fantastic session. Great speakers. And, you know, looking back at the total summit, it, uh, it, it was really fantastic, really amazing what, uh, what, uh, well, what the speakers brought to the table, what the participants brought to the table. And, uh, um, well, everything that has been going on. So just a quick wrap up. And I really want to focus on Boomer or Bloomer, what's next on the what's next part, because that, of course, it's not, it doesn't stop here. And sessions like today, it really, really makes you realize there's a lot of work to be done by us, you know, by us as individuals in this generation. So we have been talking about this multi-generational workforce, and we are aware that we need to create a work environment that is welcoming to people of all age groups, where everyone feels valued, fulfilled, and challenged. But what are the questions? How can we make this happen? How can we take the next step? How can we make sure that age is included in projects on diversity, equity, and inclusion in organizations? And what am I going to do tomorrow to make change happen? Very important question. That was a fantastic day. Then we had Mike who was hosting senior entrepreneurship. We, yes, we are aware that we can be great entrepreneurs. We bring our knowledge, experience and wisdom. And statistically we have proven that we can be more successful than those who start at a younger age. But another question, so how can we get more people over the age of 50, 60, even 70 to take that step to start a business, any business? And how can we together find solutions for challenges we're facing while using our collective knowledge, experience and wisdom and start new businesses around it? For me, this is really one of the great topics. And how can we awaken that entrepreneur inside all of us? And I think that uh, Elizabeth Isola, she gave us some uh, great advice, but also Mary Cronin, who was here uh, today as well. So thank you for being here, uh, Mary. As well. So how to live your best later life today. And this is something I really needed to, to do on the go. A lot of knowledge, and I could have been typing so, so much. We are aware that the fact that longevity leads to the new rule set. It would be great if we can get rid of retirement. I love that. We know that we have to be ready for a next step and especially have to learn again as a four-year-old. Very important. We also need to find our purpose, and it needs to be aligned with our ability to earn. Get on board immediately and not do it alone. I, I love that. I'm always very action oriented. Do it. Let's, let's start today. And that was also the message that I received today. Get on board now and, do, and don't do it alone. So what are the questions? How do we find our purpose? What gives us those moments of pleasure? How can we translate that into a next step in a way that we can create sustainable income streams? Because we do know that we do need those income streams for um, many more years. Why, what, when, how do we learn? And how can we stay curious, adventurous, you know, like that four-year-old? And where do we find our tribe? the community to work with and have fun. And that is something that we really need to focus on as well. I love that. It is that part of having joy and, and also do those things together, have fun. 
And that is where it all comes back to. You know, I, I love those two days really looking at what was happening in the workplace, in your entrepreneurship, and also today. And I feel like, you know, this is actually what we're doing. You know, Brave Starts and Wise Move Society, we are looking at those questions, working together, working in that collectiveness, creating um, and being supporting each other, being each other's cheerleaders, you know, going through transition is not easy, but then have your cheerleaders and not only the dream stealers who are just walking uh, on your side and say, well, you're never going to make it. We need those cheerleaders who can really make change happen together with us. So there's a lot happening in the Brave Stars organization and in uh, the Wise Blue Society. And of course, we really would love to welcome you all there. So, um, I think that's that is the uh, Lucy. You still had some things you wanted to share. Anyone? No, just have have a lovely Easter, everyone. It's been lovely meeting you, and I hope you've had a good time. Thank you all for joining us, and see you soon. Bye bye. Thank you, Thank you all. Bye. <laughs>